Hello everybody and welcome to the Oceana Pack, Plant Zoo's latest DLC releasing on the 19th of September. And this has to be probably the most exciting pack for me because th this has so many animals that I've wanted for, for years. Like I've wanted the Tasmanian Devil since before the game came out. They are one of my favourite animals. Um, in real life, and I am so glad it's finally in the game. Now I'm gonna have to find another creature to to be pining frontier for, because the Tasmanian Devil was that animal for so long. Gonna need to have a look through the wish list to see what's next. But um, yeah, so this pack has five new animals: the Tasmanian Devil, of course, the North Island Brown Kiwi, the Quokka, the Little Blue Penguin, and the Spectacled Flying Fox. So this pack contains all sorts of um, new scenery items um, inspired by Polynesian culture um, and various different plants from across the Oceanian region. And um, yeah, so I'm just going to read what it says on the, um, on the uh, forums page. And yeah, let's go. Hey, zookeepers, pack your bags and get ready to embark on an unforgettable journey along the coastal islands. Introducing the Plant Zoo Oceana Pack, which will be sailing its way to you on 19th of September alongside free update 1.15. Abundant in rich fauna and flora, you'll discover some iconic species in various locations on the Oceanian continent. Through the lush forests of New Zealand, you may encounter the curious North Island Brown Kiwi, or set sail further along the islands to meet with the energetic Tasmanian Devil. Keep rowing along the south coast of Australia to discover a little penguin colony huddled together. Or if you prefer, take a hike to Rottnest Island to discover the lovable quokka, giving you their best smile. Oh, look up there. It's the striking spectacle flying fox spreading its wings in its walkthrough exhibit. Alongside these stunning animals, you'll also be getting over 200 scenery pieces inspired by the rich traditions of Polynesia. Decorate your zoos with intricately carved tiki statues, straw huts and colourful flower lays in celebration of the captivating culture of the region. You can even admire the diversity of the islands with the addition of impressive glow-in-the-dark faux lava, along with distinctive foliage that inhabit the islands, such as the beautiful Nikau palm and the radiant silver fern, emblematic of New Zealand. It's time to also welcome back Emma Goodwin, Bernie's daughter in another Planet Zoo career scenario. This time you'll be supporting Emma as she works on a very special project in the oceanic region focusing on conservation. Of course, you'll be helping her fix up the place, add some infrastructure, and making sure plant diversity is on point. Can't forget about the animals too. You'll take part in, an, in establishing a breeding program to make sure all the wonderful species that are unique to the region are around for generations to come. Can you help a a Emma? I was about to say Amy. Can you help Emma make the project a success? We can't wait to see how you tackle this one. Okay, so moving on into the trailer, we can see some surfboards and what looks to be beach grass. We've also got a beautiful kiwi statue next to some Polynesian um, totems. Or is it? Are they totems? I I can't quite remember the name. But we also got some netting and some new wood pieces and the new thatch, as well as this um, this plant. I don't know what it's called. Um, in the next shot, we can also see these planks with rope on them. So these I've seen before, like the planks specifically, they're placed around Australian beaches um, a lot just to help keep the banks to get, help keep the dunes together. I keep getting banks and dunes mixed up because, well, they can both be near water. Um, anyway, we've, still, we've got these flower lays over here hanging on the wood. Um, a new wooden fence. Um, it would be cool if that was a barrier option. That would be awesome. Um, we've also got some tiki statues, some lovely little pink flowers that also exist um, on the Australian coastline and I've seen these I just cannot remember what they're called we've got the emblematic silver fern of New Zealand and what looks to be the edge of a canoe and some thatch roofs in the distance and our little kiwi running across there um, and, I've, and speaking of the kiwi here it is so this is possibly New Zealand's most iconic animal and honestly, I would love it if we got more New Zealand animals. We get two in this pack, but I would honestly love to see something like a Tuatara, a Kia, a Kakapo, 
Uh, although I don't know if Kakapos are in captivity. I don't think they are. Uh, maybe a Weta. So a giant bush cricket. Either way, it looks fantastic. We'll get a better look of it. Better look at this animal later. Um, here's um, a great wide shot of this Korea park. So you can see some boats in the water. Um, some of the volcanic rock underneath that, that bridge going over the water. You can see all the thatch roofs, some of these other plants, um, some different kinds of palm trees. I believe this is the Nikau palm, this tall one in the middle. Um, also, these other tall plants here um, stemming up from these totems. Um, either way, all this foliage and all this scenery makes this park come alive, and I really love how this looks. This is probably... I, I love the scenery set in the tropical pack. It was really... Um, really nice and I like how we're going to a more cultural um, aesthetic with all this and this honestly looks fantastic. In this shot we get our look at a Tasmanian devil habitat. We will get a better look at the man himself um, or I should say the devil himself um, a little bit later on but we've got this lovely um, statue here with the black and the white swirls and circles and we can see two Tasmanian devils in this habitat here, one running through the grass, um, as you can see in the trailer. We've got a few other tiki's, this other little fence here with some netting. Um, we've got these hanging ropes. Uh, we've also got a new path. Um, I believe this might actually be the same as this. Uh, so this might be the fence of that new path because as you can see here, that path comes up and up onto this terrace. So yeah, I think these are connected. So um, it, all in all, um, all this is looking pretty good. I don't, I can't spot anything that we haven't seen in previous images um, that we haven't covered. But let's keep moving on. So if the, if this text wasn't in the way, we would be able to see a little bit more. But there are some boats and some supported houses and huts on on the water. You can also see some quokka statues down in the bottom corner. Um, and a few more of those pink flowers and silver ferns. But um, yeah, I can't wait to see the quokka. wonder what he's going to look like. Probably going to be happy. Or not. Did you know that quokkas are actually terrible parents? Like, um, I don't know if, for those watching this, um, quokkas are, are terrible mothers. Because if there is a threat, they will throw their joey at the predator to escape. Yes. They may look cute, but they're not. <laughs> Motherhood is not their strong suit. Um, here we get a look at our little penguins. Um, looking fantastic. And I've, I've been reading on the forums today uh, over the course um, of this DLC's announcement. Apparently, this is specifically the Australian little penguin. Because um, according to... Um, I can't, can't quite remember who said it on the forums, but um, they said that New Zealand little penguins are a bit more grey coloured and this guy is a bit more on the blue side which would make it a little blue penguin of Australia. But they look fantastic swimming through the water here. Really going to uh, make some good habitats for these guys. Here we have our look at the spectacle flying fox. Uh, so we've got a living flying fox here and what I suspect to be a sign here because that, those wings are way too reflective and is and the colors are way too strong so I, that is that is definitely a sign rather than the real bat that's here and a few hanging up here and flapping around um, we've got some new, some of the tiki's here a um, bit of a metal barrow barrow barrel there um, these tall plants here a new bench new bin um, these large columns too are looking really nice and all the ropes here but um, yeah, Spectacle Flying Fox was a surprising addition. I, I can speak for most people and say that we were expecting rainbow lorikeets or some kind of island bird. Um, but a, another fruit bat is not too bad of a uh, not too bad of an animal because fruit bats are a quintessential part of most islands. If you go to Mauritius, you'll find Rodriguez flying foxes, although they are critically endangered. So good luck finding them. Um, Indonesia is also full of um, flying foxes, but um, when it comes to Oceania, um, flying foxes are quite prevalent. 
the spectacle flying fox in particular is found up in queensland um and um yeah that they're a very beautiful species they're probably our prettiest flying fox because of that those intricate facial markings um however australian bats have something called australian bat lysivirus which is um not not safe for people so i'd be worried about these people here if they got um scratches from an infected bat but um yeah i don't believe egyptian fruit bats have that but these guys certainly do so um yeah we'll see what happens here but um overall i'm happy seeing another flying fox added um without this text in the way you can see um more of these planks here um as well as some bracken ferns that we already have in the game and the trunk of one of those Nikal palms and the silver ferns over in the uh, over in the top but you can also see next to the on um a realistic kiwi kiwi sign so we've been getting these realistic animal signs since um since wetlands i believe we were getting all, all these um different realistic looking um signs for the animals and it's honestly a great idea because rather than all these stylized signs we can have some conventional signs for people who want to build realistic but i'm glad the kiwi's getting one and i imagine all the other animals will be receiving very similar treatment and last um few shots we see the kiwi strutting around through the temperate forest of this um of this island um with some of the cow palm in the back and thatch roofing really going to be fun to build with these new pieces um and we just end with the kiwi sitting in some periwinkle with the um pink flowers around in front of the burrow so um yeah kiwi's going to be able to use the large burrow um and just a hot tip don't expect the kiwi to be producing too many offspring because kiwis only produce one egg and that one egg takes up half their body or at least a third of their body it's it's a very large egg i guess that's the one handicap of being a small bird related to the largest birds in the world um but uh yeah they are this is going to be a fun animal to build for in this image we can get a good look at the kiwi um you can see the whiskers around the head the long beak the dark eyes and the lovely brown feathers overall it is a very beautiful and well-made creature um it's very primitive looking feet and interestingly they have four toes whereas most ratites have two two or three um yeah so you can also see a few new tree ferns um around here as well with some silver ferns too unless the silver fern is a tree fern can't quite remember i thought they were on the ground base but um hey they if they go up they go up and my favorite image of the day the tasmanian devil finally implanted i say favorite image of the day probably my favorite image of the year because we have been waiting for this guy for so long and i have to say this is probably the most perfect animal i've ever seen in planet zoo like it is spot on i've met I, i've met tansy devils in in real life i've held one in my hands and they are these guys are spot on they kudos to the to the team who made it um it is phenomenal like this is probably my new favorite animal in the game um because look at it i've been waiting so long and i am not disappointed like look at it i love the detail the claws the teeth um the different patterns they have so this one in the front has um this sort of blotching um like sort of a separated stripe the joey here has a far thinner stripe and this guy has a stripe that it, the guy in the back who's scratching his face has a stripe that goes from his shoulder across his chest and back to his other shoulder so i love the pattern variation in the tassie devil here and yeah it is absolutely incredible and the way that the one was running in the trailer um you can barely see it but that is a tasmanian devil run if there if there are a few things that i would like to hope are in for the tasmanian devil is they do stand on their they can go up on their hind legs a little bit um just like a meerkat sort of um and joey's 
can actually climb trees. So that, that way they can avoid competition and potential predators. But um, I don't know whether that's been implemented into the Tassie Devil for the game. That would just be a cool, unique little feature uh, for it. But um, we'll have to wait and see until next week for confirmation of that. But yeah, this I could go on and on about how good this animal looks. Like down to the fur textures, the detail inside of the ear. Yeah, it, it is just perfect. I, I think I found my dream animal for Plant Zoo. Because you can sort of get a front-on look at the Tassie Devil um, with the one scratching his face. And yeah, it is it is perfect. Yeah, I, I couldn't hope for it to be any better than this. This is this is perfect. Yeah, again, thank you Frontier for finally adding the Tasmanian Devil. It is awesome. Can't wait to use it in game. Yeah, it's absolutely phenomenal. <laughs> but um, yeah, we'll have to move on or I'll be talking about this all video. Um, so we come to this other wide shot of the um, career scenario uh, map. So you can see some of that false lava down here, um, glowing bright. There's even some over in the corner there. Um, all these volcanic rocks too. It's very thematic for um, the islands of, of Oceania because many of them were formed by volcanoes. New Zealand particularly is, has got a lot of volcanoes. So um, it's a very cool um, idea and can also be implemented into anyone trying to make a Hawaii-inspired um, zoo, uh, zoo and just bring in the volcanoes. But um, yeah, it's going to be fun to play with this lava and see how versatile it is. But um, yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff. you got this custom-made ship, um, some of the canoes there, all these different roof pieces. Yeah, it's a very... This is a very good scenery set. Um, yeah, I think the two, these two scenery sets for this year are probably my favorite in the game. Like the Tropical Pack, it was so detailed. And this one is just very cultural, but culture focused. And just, it's also very detailed because um, all that, all the wood textures and thatch textures, all of it's phenomenal. But um, yeah, I think that's all I've got to say on that one. Uh, we've also got the key art for the DLC here, um, with the Kiwi being the front runner of the pack. Personally, I would have loved it if the Tassie Devil was the headliner, but I guess it's because the Kiwi is from New Zealand, and we have never really focused on New Zealand until now. So I sort of like focusing it. And the background, of course, is inspired by the wilderness of New Zealand. Um, so it makes sense to have the two New Zealand animals in the game, the kiwi and the little penguin, of which there are tons of them there. My good lord, there are so many. There's even some up on the rocks. But um, I think these are two chicks here, um, in between these three adults here. And there's a bunch on the beach and in the water as well. I, I'm, I think I'm going to really enjoy using the little penguin. There are so many. <laughs> like Given that they're so small, it makes it much easier to have so many of them but um yeah if this was a map in the game like if we go to new zealand in game let's see if it looks like this because if it does oh i might be building there that that might be the island pack um map because if those mountains oh i really hope so frontier please i'd love to see that that is a phenomenal um is it like a what what were they called um, for the? I was in an update. They had biome skirts. Ah yes, so the skirts are like the edge of the map. If that was the skirt for this map, yeah, definitely building there. This is also good. <laughs> I love it so much. Um, now we've got a bit of, on update one point fifteen. Not too much, but um, there's a fair bit here on the new viewing domes, as you can see before you. So I'll just read what it says here. Give your zoo visitors a whole new viewing experience with viewing domes. Guests will be able to enter these viewing domes in the habitat via an underground network without any need for a path or tunnel. So they can enjoy an up close um, view of your wonderful animals through the safety of the glass. To, act that, to activate this feature, just place a viewing dome entrance on the habitat barrier and then place your viewing dome anywhere inside the habitat. 
They'll automatically be connected to your dome gate and can even place multiple domes in one habitat. Why not place them underwater to create an even more breathtaking view? Just make sure you add water to the terrain after you've placed the viewing dome in the desired location. You can find your dome entrance in the barriers menu and the glass viewing dome in your get pardon me in your guest facilities and habitats tab. We're excited to see all the creative ways you utilize this new feature for zoos. Um, oh, that was the end. <laughs> to utilize this new feature for your zoos. That's a that's a better finisher there. Um, we've now added the brachiation behavior for the Bornean orangutan. We saw that um, on the stream, and if you followed Plant Zoo's social media channels, um, you would have seen the video yourself. They will be able to brachiate using the 1 meter, 2 meter, 4 meter, and 6 meter climbable log. So it doesn't really say much about the metal climbing frames or any sort of ropes and vines, but... Um, I would assume, given they worked that in for the gibbon, they would have worked it in for the orangutan too. But um, again, we'll have to wait and see for that. So you'll be seeing them swim, swinging around. I was about to say swimming. And the orangutan going freestyle. So, it'll be, so you will be seeing them swinging around in your zoos in ways you've not seen before. There we go. Got there in the end. Um, there are also new color morphs for the king penguin from the aquatic pack which are melanistic, leucistic, brown, and xanthic. That's going to be interesting. We're going to have to see what that, all that looks like. We also added a new temperate oceana biome for you to enjoy in all modes. Okay, so I wonder if they're going to be unique to each area. Like New Zealand's going to have its own and Australia's going to have its own. Although most of Australia's plants are in the Australia pack, so I don't know how the skirt would quite work. And yeah, we'll have to see. Have to wait and see and see what happens. But um, yeah, that is all we have for now on the pack. We have not seen the quokka yet, so it, it's actually surprising this time that we, well, actually, sort of. So with the tropical pack, we got looks at four animals um in the announcement trailer. Well, somewhat. We saw the lar gibbon. We saw the red river hog. Um, we saw the Asian water monitor and the brown throated sloths um, sign. And here we've seen the kiwi, we've seen the Tassie devil, we've seen the little penguin, and we've also seen the spectacle flying fox. Um, all in full, but the quokka has been left out here. Yeah, so we'll have to wait and see for the, for the little smiley fella. But um, yeah. Look forward to this pack because it is totally worth it. I, I've always said um, for Plant Zoo players and when I've been making my DLC ideas, um, you want to focus a bit on player familiarity um, for a game such as this. So for me personally, building in Plant Zoo has been slightly confusing because in Australia, we don't have many of the animals that exist in Planet Zoo. So... We don't have things like the moose. We don't have things like the brown bear. We don't have Eurasian lynxes or um, grey seals or any anything of those sorts that exist in zoos elsewhere in the world. We don't have jaguars or babarusas, nothing like that. We've got a very select um, lot of animals, mo most of which are native to the Oceanian region. And more packed. And packs like this really help um, players in um, Oceania, given the strict laws of exports and imports for many wild animals. So this is a very valuable pack to players like me that live in Oceania, because many of these animals are quite familiar and are much easier to build for, because you would have seen them um, in the in the zoos yourself. So you know how they're displayed and you're able to work with that and that inspiration can help you build better enclosures. But um, yeah, overall thoughts, this is going to become one of my favorite packs, not just because of the Tassie Devil, although that is seriously a big factor. Um, but um, yeah, this is very valuable. Tassie Devil, very useful. Little Penguin, very useful. Kiwi can be very useful. I mean, I've never seen one. But um, I'm I'm sure I can work it work it out. Spectacle flying fox very useful. Quokka also very useful. So you see what I mean? Like 
player familiarity with animals is important in Planet Zoo. I mean, most of the audience, I'm sure, is overseas, but um, yeah. But I've never been outside of Australia, fun fact. <laughs> so um, unfortunately, I've never seen most of the animals in Planet Zoo myself either. So um, yeah. But on, on that note, um, we're going to have to end the video here. If you're excited for the Oceana pack, leave your comments in the description, in the comments down below. Um, and yeah, like and subscribe for more. We have, we have recently gone over 500 subscribers and I would really appreciate it if we could keep that number climbing. It's a journey. And, um, yeah, I, I'm really glad for those who watch these videos because I, I don't have a lot of time on my hands um, to be doing videos all the time. So um, I'm, I'm grateful for those who have subscribed and have liked my videos because I can only do with the time I have. So um, thank you again and in, enjoy the anticipation for the Oceana pack for Planet Zoo. Bye-bye.